5,388,000 new businesses were started in the US in 2021. This broke the record of the previous year when over 4 million new business applications were filed in the United States. After two record-breaking years of people starting their companies, the trend is not slowing down. According to QuickBooks report, there could be over 17 million businesses set up in 2022. This prediction comes from a survey where QuickBooks asked 8,000 employees where they wanted to quit their jobs to start a business. And it turns out 57% of those asked would love to start a business and one out of five will make the leap in 2022. If you're an entrepreneur who's willing to start this year, you might probably be wondering if there are any ideas that are left out there. Isn't everything taken? There are so many companies. People are doing so many incredible things. Is there still any problem that is not solved yet? Or are there any other ideas that are waiting for me? In reality, there are plenty of ideas out there in the world for entrepreneurs who are willing to go deeper and who are willing to change people's lives. In this video, we're gonna go through several business ideas that have generated for you in the past few weeks. I live in Silicon Valley and I talk to entrepreneurs on a daily basis and I keep asking them what are the problems on the market that they see. I also notice some opportunities myself. So in this video, we're gonna talk about creative things, we're gonna talk about crypto, we're gonna talk about different business opportunities. Before we dive into the ideas, I just wanted to remind you that business is hard, managing a team is hard, and the hardest thing is when you don't really believe in the problem that you're solving, because not believing in it doesn't give you enough motivation to overcome those problems. So whenever you're listening to those ideas, make sure that the one that you choose resonates with your heart, and it's okay that you don't find an idea in the next few months, it takes a while to find the right idea. It takes a while to identify the right market. It takes a while to build a team, but it all starts with this little spark in your mind when you hear some problem, when you hear about an idea and you're like, I'm the one to do this. Let's talk about top profitable business ideas for 2022. The first business idea actually comes from me as a creator. I rely on stock footage a lot. Some B-rolls that you see in this video are actually purchased from a third party. There are different platforms out there like story blogs, like Shutterstock. But the problem with every single platform is they try to curate high quality content. When the end purchaser, a YouTuber, I don't need high quality content. I want content that is relatable. I want content that is made with the phone. You know, sometimes you look at the pictures and the faces are just plastic. They're not like real people. They're polished. They're over Photoshop. The light is just too perfect. I don't want perfect footage. I want real footage. If I'm filming in Stanford, I would love to buy some student's footage made with his iPhone when he showed his, you know, class. Or when I'm filming about an airport, I don't want this 4K beautiful plastic person going through customs and waving people. I want real footage made with iPhone when somebody's traveling, just recording their, you know, dirty seat in economy class or overcrowded airport. I want real footage. So I think it's a great idea for you creative people out there. Create a platform where people submit real life footage made with their phones, even with a camera, but that doesn't look too polished and doesn't look like it's from another world. The next idea, and it's actually a problem that I experienced myself, and I just found a solution, but I also see the market growing like crazy. Over 60 million people in the US own crypto. I sold some crypto in 2021. Now I have to file taxes. You know what happens when you sell crypto with Coinbase, for example? They never account for the money that you actually spent buying crypto. So for example, last year I sold $5,000 worth of crypto. Coinbase just gives me a report saying you made $5,000 in profit, which is not true. I actually spent, I might have spent even $6,000 buying the, that crypto, so I made a loss. But for some reason, major crypto exchanges just don't do it. Like, and what I had to do, I had to download a CSV file and manually create my calculations. Like, okay, I sold this crypto, but this is when I bought it back in 2019. And that was the price. I actually lost some money here. And this is my tax loss harvesting instead of just $5,000 in profit. So basically this does not exist with major brokers. You have to do things manually. And this is a huge market opportunity. And there is actually a company doing this. And the next segment of this video is sponsored by them. The company is called Coinly. So they basically realized that there is this huge problem. 
people need to file their taxes. Going manually through a file, through a doc is not something a lot of people are used to doing when you know there is an app to optimize every part of our life. So they built this app to optimize the tax filing process for people who bought and sold crypto. Coily tracks every transaction in all of your crypto accounts and it creates those reports for you. So basically what you do, you connect your crypto wallets and crypto accounts to Coily and they automatically start collecting information that you need to file your taxes. There is a simple dashboard to track your overall portfolio and it allows you to produce all kinds of reports. Another thing that I noticed like in Binance it doesn't really show you how much you've made with crypto. Like it shows some fluctuations, but it doesn't show you like you spend $5,000 and now they're worth like $7,000. So overall your portfolio made $2,000. Of course you need to sell to actually get the profit, but there are no reports like that. And Coinly solves that problem. It is free to sign up, so there is no reason to not give it a try. The link will be down in the description box below. I strongly recommend using Coinly to file your crypto taxes. Now, we talked about Coinly who identified this market opportunity, but what I also want you to understand, whenever you identify a problem, the first thing that you would do is Google if anyone is doing something. I also want you to understand that if the market is big enough, there would be opportunity for several companies. Just like with ride sharing apps, we don't just have Uber, we also have Lyft and we have local players. Like with, you know, travel, we have Expedia, we have hotel.com, yes, they, have the same owner, but it's a different thing. So every market has capacity for a lot of different apps because there are different angles with which you approach your customer. There are different perks that you can add. So don't be scared away by a lot of competition on the market. I would be scared away if you identify the market and there is no competition because it might be a good sign that there is no demand for the product. The next idea is real-time street parking. So we recently got a Cadillac and it actually shows you free parking lots. So you basically just go using their navigation system and they would tell you like, hey, especially in San Francisco, it's a huge problem. So it's available in my car, but it's not available in my other car because it just doesn't have this system. So having a app that would collect footage from CCTV cameras that would integrate with the city's parking system and would allow you to see where parking spaces are available could be a great solution, could be a great local solution for your town, but it could also grow wider nationwide. Check this market out, I think it's huge. And another idea I also had, but this is like a bigger startup Silicon Valley style idea, is check out with your license in a car. Like we have so many drive through things. We have McDonald's, we have, you know, parking where you have to pay. We have drive through stores. What if instead of giving someone the car or paying for the parking with a meter, you just get automatically charged by your license plate. Of course, there are security issues. Of course, there are things to think about, but Tesla is already doing this with charging. If you charge your Tesla, you don't need to scan your card. The, the charger recognizes the car and the bill goes directly to your credit card. Why can't we do this for every car and for every business that is drive through? Okay, the next one is a great idea for remote places. For example, I live kind of far away from the nearest grocery store. It would take me 10 minutes to drive to the grocery store. If I order a delivery, I pay extra and sometimes it takes three to four hours. There are services that offer this 10 minute delivery and they are good for big cities and there are several apps like that in New York already. But for remote areas like mine, what if we could have an automated store on wheels that comes by your house with all of the necessary things. Because when I order things, milk for my babies, formula for my babies, or eggs, or bread, so something very basic. What if we have those automated stores? They could be driven by people right now, but later they could be robots, and they come by your house, like those ice cream cars with this funny sound. They don't have to make funny sound, but anyways, come driving by residential areas at a certain time so that you don't have to go somewhere. Like if you're an elderly person, you don't have to get out of the house and carry those bags. This store could bring all the essential goods for people 
who live in remote areas. This is the business that is actually really easy to start. All you need to do is buy things, let your neighbors know and start going to neighborhoods and see how that works. The next thing is would be really relatable for parents. So when I had my first kid, I was worried about everything. I even got her this little, I think it was called owl sock that you put on the on baby's feet and it tracks their breathing rate. Uh, just because I was so worried that she would stop breathing. And um, when I told my pediatrician about that, she was like, Marina, you're overreacting. And like having this heavy sock on her because it had some metal thing could actually affect the way her hips are developing. So she was like, Marina, calm down. But I was still like, I want to make sure. So I woke up every two hours and then just to check on my baby. What if? We have an IoT pacifier, like a smart pacifier, because my baby sleeps with a pacifier through the whole night, that tracks if the baby's breathing, if the temperature is okay, maybe run some quick tests on saliva. Okay, there are different parents. There are parents who would tell me like, Marina, are you crazy? Like, let your child live a normal life. So something like that, that doesn't really intervene with baby's body development. And also really easy to install, like that sock, it took me a while to put it on correctly. The pacifier, you just put it in the mouth, the baby's asleep, and as a parent, you get some peace of mind. And I just see how many monetization options there are. First of all, buying the pacifier itself, and then having the subscription to an app that tracks everything. The next idea, also in terms of like startup cost would be cheaper compared to other ideas in this video. This is seasonal decoration rental. Every year, Christmas, Christmas trees, all of the things that you want to put in your house. And sometimes you want to decorate because you have a party. The next year you're traveling and the year after you realize your decorations don't look as good. So providing people with decorations for their Christmas trees with different themes and also having someone to come and install those, maybe Easter decorations, just having this easily done and available for people could be a great business idea. The next business idea would help us save a lot of time because it focuses on summarizing podcasts and YouTube videos. One of my favorite companies, Morning Brew, which is basically a newsletter that comes into your email every day for free, summarizing everything that's going on in the world from viral tweets to, you know, what's happening in different countries created by amazing writers. It was acquired for $75 million. Their monetization, they sell ads in the newsletters. I think there are smaller niches. You don't have to talk about news everywhere, but you could have a small niche like you're summarizing content from business related podcasts during the week. What Gary Vee said, who was a guest on This Week in Startups, what Justin Khan talked about in his video, was there a new video from Gary Tan? Summarizing everything that's going on, especially for podcasts, I feel that with videos, you can just, you know, kind of scroll and you see the chapters. And like for me, visually, it's easier to understand what the video is about. However, with podcasts, you can't really tell what's gonna happen on minute 32 unless you're like scrolling and pausing to listen. So summarizing podcasts or YouTube videos in a certain niche, building that email list and then selling ads in those emails could be a great business idea for 2022 when we have a lot of content on different topics. Then the next idea is more tech heavy. So we're talking about metaverse, we're talking about AR and VR. And I was listening to Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook and he was basically saying that, yes, having glasses makes it more real. But the thing is, what we don't have in virtual reality yet is that we touch things in metaverse where we don't actually feel that we're touching things in reality. Because what we need right now is this thing called haptic glove. So when you touch something, it actually creates the feeling that you are touching something in real life. And once we have that, once we can feel things with our body, this is when we have like the real metaverse. And when we can actually press a button in metaverse and we feel that we're pressing it in real life. This is where a lot of research goes. This is where a lot of money is going into. So if you're the type of person that loves technology, when we talk about technology, you don't have to understand everything that's going on. I think when we talk about entrepreneurship, it's all about being able to hire people, give them the right direction and being able to hire talented people. So if you're excited about technology, Think in that direction, think about that market. Haptic glove research. And my last idea is inspired by a TV show called Emily in Paris. I basically loved every single outfit. It, they are kind of, they have their own taste. 
but I really like that bright kind of style. And I was like, how do I get those? So I found an Instagram account where you could actually shop their styles. And that was created by some of the fans of the TV show, just like I was. And I thought, why is there not a platform? And this could be a great marketing platform for the brands out there where you collect looks and outfits from different movies. So you could go to that platform, you could go click Emily in Paris, and then you have all the things you could buy. And those outfits could be coming from brands directly or they could be coming from people who already own them because I guess if something appears in a movie, it goes really quickly. So building this marketplace for outfits that were in the movies and also maybe having more affordable versions of those outfits could be a great idea. Even my husband, he watched Billions and this guy who's the main character there, he was inspired by his style. So he was looking for something similar. So into like stores like Theory, looking for coats, like minimalism kind of style. It would be really cool if we could go online, select Billions and see all the outfits that were worn during the filming and buy the same kind of stuff. That was it from me for today, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video up to the very end. Looking forward to reading your comments, what you think about those business ideas. And if you end up starting any idea from this video, don't forget to come back and let me know. Thank you so much and see you very soon in my next vlogs. Bye-bye.